Hey, it's Elle. Let's talk about my 2021 reading goals. So the first one I have is to reduce my physical TBR. I've been working on this since like the end of 2019. I wrote down in a spreadsheet every book I had, its red state, and then kind of made some goals about where I wanted to get to because I was feeling really overwhelmed with the quantity of books I had. Um, I like to use my library, so it was getting, I was using my library so often that I wasn't prioritizing my physical books but I had so many physical books that I felt bad using my library, so it was a little bit of a catch-22 in my head. So um, I will present some stats. So at the start of 2020, I owned 252 unread books. And then I either read, DNF'd, or just got rid of, throughout the course of 2020, 131 books which brought me at the end of 2021 to 121 unread books that I had owned since beginning of the year. But then I had bought and did not re read 64 books, which got me to, at the end of 2020, 185 books. So, I mean, going from 252 to 185 while still like feeling the liberty in my own head of buying books was nice. Um, I don't really like the idea of giving myself a final goal for 2021. Um, I just, I just, I slowly want to reduce this. This isn't like a 2021 goal. This is like a goal of how I want my library to look and my ownership of books to look like. So I think, I think this year it was able to, I was able to reduce it a lot more because a lot of these books I had bought for hype and then ended up starting and DNFing or they were like, like genres or things that I just I knew I wasn't really going to be into so I got rid of them so I was able to like hone in more of like the types of books I want and the types of books I like and because of that I got rid of a lot of the low hanging fruit of my library so at this point I have a feeling that there's going to be less of them that are easier to get rid of or just going to be DNFs so I don't think I'll get rid of 131 of them again this year and I don't really want to set that priority to myself. So maybe if I could get that 185 down to 100, that would be cool, but if not, it's not a big deal. One part of how I'm achieving this is by reading them. The other part is my buying habits and um, being more intentional and mindful with what I'm buying and why I'm buying. So a little bit about how I come into contact with the books that come into my house. Um, I'm a big fan of used bookstores. I like the hunt for a book, knowing I want to find something and read something, and then going to bookstores, used bookstores, and searching around for it. I also just like keeping local used bookstores in business. Um, so because of that, it's harder to find lesser known books. Um, so before I had a tendency of just buying books because I had heard of them and they were cheap. It was like, oh, it's three bucks. I might as well buy it. Um, but now I'm just being more intentional with the types of books I'm buying, the types of books that I want to read. And that kind of brings me into my second goal, which is reading more diversely. So I've been tracking this since 2019. I, I kind of just wanted to get at that point, I wanted to get a sense of where I was at um, because um, I was noticing I was reading a lot of books by white authors. And so when I talk about reading more diversely, I'm mainly talking about reading books by BIPOC authors. Um, I, I don't want my diversity reading to be checking a box. Um, and so m my intention with this goal is that I like to read books where they're different than me. They have different experiences. Um, they live in different cultures. They grow up differently. I don't really look for myself in my reading. I look for other experiences in my reading. And so knowing that that's a, a way I like to read or what I'm looking for in a reading experience, I started to track that. And 
in 2019 found that only 27% of my reading was by BIPOC authors. And that was, I started tracking as a baseline, but I was also setting the intention at that point. So I was reading a little bit more than I probably had in the past. In 2020, that number got up to 35%. Um, which I'm, I'm happy about and making progress. And then in 2021, I don't have a specific goal. I just want that number to keep rising. And going back to goal one, one of the ways that I'm doing that is by being more intentional in the types of books I, I buy, um, uh, promoting and celebrating and buying the books of BIPOC authors. So yeah, um, with, with terms of diversity, my overall goal is to eventually be at the point where over half of the books that I'm reading are by authors that are not like me and not white. Um, and so I'm slowly trying to make it to that goal year over year. And the, the point for me is that I want it to feel natural. I want to naturally be picking up reading and also picking up buying um, books by non-white BIPOC authors so that eventually it's not even something I have to track, it's not even something I have to think about, I'm just doing it naturally. So I, I'm driven by data, so I, I look at the data and I want to be able to make tweaks to my habits based on the data, but the whole goal is to be moving me into a place where I'm doing these things naturally, where they really don't have to be goals anymore because I'm just doing it. The point of these goals for me is where I want my reading to get to. And based off of the data that I collect on my reading, I'm not quite there yet. So um, this is the way, these are my overarching goals year over year, then the specific ways I'm trying to accomplish them so that I can eventually be in a state where I don't have to have these as goals anymore. That's my second goal. One of the sub goals of this is um, came about uh, for me at the end of last year. Um, I participated pre YouTube channel. I participated in in Digathon and um, when I started looking for books that I had read by indigenous authors, um, I, I could only find three. Um, and two of them I had read earlier in 2020. And um, living in the United States and li living in a place that's white, made of, up of white colonizers, um, living on stolen land, I, I just feel that I should um, pay more attention to these voices since um, they get kind of get erased in society. So part of that, part of it is buying books by those authors, going to the library. Um, I just want to be more mindful about reading books by indigenous authors this year. Part two of reading more diversely for me is reading books in translation. Um, I've had this goal for years because I find I've enjoyed a lot of like weird, shorter fiction that's in translation. And so I've also been tracking this since 2019. And that year I read 9% of my reading was in translation. And I had this goal last year and I failed it miserably because in 2020, 5% of my, book, my reading was um, in translation. And I wanna get that number up this year. I don't really have a particular number in mind. Again, I don't wanna set myself up for failure. I just wanna get it up. And so one of the ways I'm doing that is by participating in the Invisible Cities project. I'll link the information to that below, but each month um, the creators of that pick three countries and the intention is that you find books in translation from those countries, but the whole concept is really bigger than just books, different types of media, different foods, like different parts of the culture that you can um, interact with. Uh, especially in this pandemic era where we're all staying at home and not traveling. So just by participating in that, if I keep up steam with it, um, I will probably achieve that goal of above my 2019 and 2020 numbers. But yeah, for goals, that's really all I have. Um, let me know in the comments if you have any goals, if they align with mine at all and what you think of them. 
And until next time, happy reading.